just uh, introduce yourself. And okay, I'm Michael Painter. I've uh, been a student uh, since 1970 of the Ranch and Book. And um, so in uh, 1979, I went to work for the Urantia Foundation, worked there until uh, 1989 when I resigned uh, over some issues around the, the kind of split that occurred there. Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, the Urantia Brotherhood picked me up as an employee for two years, worked for them for two years. And then the Brotherhood kind of decided that uh, they didn't want to have to raise too much money and they would just start doing everything by volunteers. So they let most of the staff go and sold the headquarters building they had on Wrightwood Avenue. And then basically uh, everything moved to John Hale's house and uh, uh, stayed there until he resigned. And then when he resigned, we moved everything to Paula Thompson's spare bedroom. And that was been the uh, offices uh, for the fellowship uh, for that long time. Uh, so I'll turn it back to see if you have specific questions there. Yeah, well, any memories you have about talking to uh, like actors or musicians or... Absolutely. Uh, I remember a long conversation with uh, Eddie Arnold and Eddie Arnold uh, was begging almost to say can't you separate part four? I have so many Christian friends and I would love to give them just part four, but I don't think that, you know, the rest of that book is necessarily for them. And, and so, of course, I explained that we didn't want to break up the book and the usual uh, kind of party line there about all that. And then uh, the guy that wrote the theme song uh, for Tootsie, uh, Stephen Bishop, uh, talked to him one time uh, for a while, and he seemed pretty interested in the book. And those are the two that stick out of my mind as far as, uh, you know, musicians go. Um, uh, the only two that I can really remember of that kind of stature. Yeah, and, um, and, and yeah, do you remember anything else about talking to Eddie Albert? The, well, one thing is I guess that you had heard he would call kind of not, on occasion, right? He was I known only, to call or? I only remember talking to him uh, one time, uh, my fellow, uh, Worker Scott Forsyth might have, I can't, I'm not really quite sure, but I remember the one long conversation with him about it, and he didn't seem very happy uh, with that response, uh, but I think he kind of got the feeling that it wasn't going to happen, so I don't remember him calling back. You know? yeah. 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 Do you have any, uh, you want to share anything about what it was like to know some of the, well, Christy for one, but kind of a people who were part of the original? Sure, yeah. You know, Christy was just a, a really neat lady, incredibly dedicated, you know, kind of person. I remember uh, I, I was able to get the job. I was recommended by uh, a man named Meredith Sprunger, who was very well known in the movement and so on. And Christy was looking for somebody, and Meredith happened to be president of the Brotherhood for that time. And uh, he was in Fort Wayne. I was in Indianapolis. Our study groups got together. So he recommended me, and I remember the interview, Christy took me up to the third floor and there was a small little corner table with a Tiffany lamp and she kind of yanked the chain to turn the light on and we were sitting sort of like, <clears throat> you know, uh, across from each other. She put her, her hand over her eyes like this, like, you know, one foot from my eyes and just stared at my eyes and just grilled me for a while. But <laughs> I guess I passed the test because she, uh, she ended up, uh, you know, uh, hiring me there. So. But um, yeah, all, all the people, Edith Cook, Marion Rowley, uh, all of the old timers that we call them were, um, you know, very, very dedicated, totally dedicated, you know, to the book. And pretty much Christie was the matriarch. I mean, everybody uh, kind of, you know, what was not gonna go against anything that, uh, that Christie said. And um, so, you know, one of the, I thought one of the most interesting, you hear a lot of old time stories from them and, and, and I never knew quite if they were true or not, so I, did, I sort of just, you know, didn't make too many judgments about it. But I think the most fascinating one to me was, uh, she said that there was a guy in Virginia uh, during World War II who had, was like a, you know, a hobby of, of, of battles. And he actually conceived the idea of the D-Day invasion. 
and they were given, they meaning our unseen friends, because a human had thought of the idea, they were given permission to transfer it to the mind of somebody in Eisenhower's European theater, and that's how the D-Day invasion plan came about. So I thought that was pretty interesting in terms of you know what they can do and, 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 and what they can't do. I'm sure they probably had to get permission to do that, but you know it was obviously a, a pretty severe situation. So wow, you know they, they approved uh, that, that transfer of the thought from the one mind to another. I never heard any, I've never heard that story before. And that's yeah. something that Christy told you? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And she said that, did she say how she heard it? Did... Uh, you know, she, she was around. I mean, I can only imagine that, it, that, you know, at some point the midwayers probably told them that or something. I mean, I yeah. don't know how else you would know about a story like that. Wow. So, yeah. 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 Were there any other, um, yeah, did, I was just trying to think if there were any other stories that I've heard that I was curious if you had heard, but uh, I guess there are so many. <laughs> the other, like the one about the train. <laughs> there was one. The seraphic train. Or yeah, yeah the story about some planet was uh, facing uh, destruction. And they were told that if they looked out in a certain direction on a certain night, they would see all the seraphim transporting all those people off the planet. Yeah. So, Again, I wasn't there. I don't yeah. know, but that was a that was a pretty common uh, story. So there were several old timers that would would uh, I've heard that from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you know like what uh, Christy like what she did in her free time, or do, do you know what I mean? Did they have uh, like hobbies like? 